forward here. All right, so still continue talking about discipline thoughts, right? Uh, Sol and Beth in the and Bethany, Bethany says that you have to forget about your ego, right? When you answer questions like this, right? So when you're talking about making changes, you have to throw your ego away. You know, that's where that's why people don't make it in business, right? Because they are all about their ego. What will people say? What will people how will people see me? And all of that stuff, you know, for some people, they're probably ashamed to call themselves a farmer. <laughs> think maybe think people will look down on that, you know, and that is ignorance. Ignorance, right? I lived in California, I lived in Texas, Houston, and those those farmers are rich. And go to California in the place I, I lived, you see a whole lot more Lexus around. Rather, morning farming. You know, this morning farming, especially when you have the 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 finance to sponsor it. You know, there is money in, in farming, a whole lot of money in farming. You know, anything that has to do with food sales. You know, I remember when Mega Chicken, you know, built their first uh, outlet here in Lekki. You know, the thought was, wow, they've been in such a big place where they make money. <laughs> they have since built a whole lot more like that because they made a lot of money from their first one. Well, the first one here, uh, uh, Ikota here, they made so much money, they built one in Ikeja. So much money, they built one by Ranchisco. You know, and probably a whole lot more, right? You can't get it wrong when it comes to food. That's a good business. You just have to ensure the quality, you know, and, and you, you there's a whole lot of money in, in food, you know. People might not do any other thing, but they got to eat. So that is an opportunity out there that you can tap into, you know. So um, Bethany goes on and says, uh, a pirate based on ego, a chain based on ego or your emotional attachment is a bad one, right? If you're making a chain based on your, your sentiments, that means you're not looking at the brutal facts around things. You're, going, it's, it's, you're probably going to hit the wall, right? Uh, so you need to be, we, we need, you, you need to be um, objective, right? When you're making changes, you know, whether it be your big, area audacious goals or whether it be your ev uh, evolutionary changes, whether it be your giant steps or your baby steps, you know, you got to throw the ego out through the window. You got to respect the brutal facts on ground, right? And, and walk with them, right? So it's, it's all about being objective in your thinking, right? So when faced with any decision about change, you first have to think about the results you want, you know? Like I we'll say, you always start with the end in mind, right? That's uh, Stephen Covey would tell us that. That's one of the um, seven habits of highly effective people. You start with the end in mind. You start with the end in mind. I believe that's second habit. First habit is being proactive. Uh, second habit is starting with the end in mind. You have to conceptualize what is it that you're trying to achieve, right? You have to then achieve that in your mind before you go to start the start with the first things, you know, breaking the ground, right? Everything is created twice, right? So when you're looking at this the problem to be solved, you have to solve it first in your mind, see that solution in your mind before you begin to execute it, right? So Bethany says, when faced with any decision about change, you first have to think about the results you want. And that can be your business, your relationship, or your personal life. Think about the results you want, right? That's important. If you're going to have a good, the right change uh, intervention, Right. Then she goes on and talks about still talking about this thing taught. She says all negatives are all negatives are opportunities. Anything that where there's a problem, there's an opportunity. That's all we, we gotta tell people that. And that goes back to Napoleon Hill. Napoleon Hill tells us that in heavy adversity, right? In heavy adversity, there is an equal, there is an equal or greater opportunity. In every storm, there is a treasure. 
that is equal to that storm or greater than that storm. In every event of life that is not pleasurable or pleasant, there's always a treasure, a seed of greatness that is either equal to or greater than the storm itself. You know, and I've been doing a study through the book of Daniel uh, um, in my weekday uh, prayer meeting. And well, that's one, that one thing we just closed out chapter six here on Friday. And that's one thing we've seen, you know, as you look through uh, Daniel chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, chapter five, chapter six. You see in every of those chapters, there is a storm that comes into their lives, you know, between Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, right? You know, in um in verse Daniel chapter one, I believe about verse ten or there about God stated that He has given to Daniel, He has given to Daniel, Shadrach and Abednego, He has given them right favor and goodwill. God gave them favor and goodwill, favor and goodwill, favor and goodwill, right? To the normal person, we'll think, oh, God has given them favor and goodwill. Suppose you just be pouring pressure into their hands. That's what we'll think. But as we do the study, true, we saw that God is giving it to them, but with the first thing they see is opposition. They see opposition. They, had, they were in a place where they could not eat the food that they were being given, right? But God has given them favor and goodwill. But it was opposition that the first thing we see. And it is the way they were able to overcome that difficulty that showed forth the favor and goodwill that God had already given to them. And we'll see that repeating itself in two, three, four, five, and we'll just go six, uh, where it talks about that Daniel was able to reign, prosper in the kingdom, under the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar. Uh, Darius and Cyrus, right? Daniel prospered. So it wasn't as if it was a fluke. He tested it and he walked under Nebuchadnezzar. He tested it and he walked under Belshazzar. He tested it and he walked under Darius. He tested it and he walked under Cyrus, right? So it, it is what we call proven, 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 tested and tried, proven, right? It can work under any circumstance, any weather. Right, it's a proven, repeatable steps to prosperity that we see in the Daniel story, right? So, and that is because in every adversity, right, and which is what we see from, from the life of Daniel, in every adversity, there's an equal or greater seed of greatness in that adversity. So don't be carried away by the adversity itself. There is something there's a promotion that is in it for you. There are opportunities in it for you. If you look too much into the into, into the into the negative, you'll miss a positive. In every negative of life, there are positives. So don't be carried away by the negatives look, that you miss the positive. Be on the lookout for the positives, even though the, a negative has hit you. Because in every negative of life, there are positives that are equal to or greater than a negative. Right? All right, we'll go on. And uh so and and when she gives an example of Cathy Island, you know, in, in the book, all right. And uh she 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 was able to use seeming um uh she was undermined, right? And she was able to use that being undermined as a secret power, right? I just shared with someone over the week talking about being undermined, right? And I would say that is your superpower. If people undermine you, people look down on you, right? That means that you can hit them suddenly before they know. Because they undermine you, that means they're not fighting with you directly, right? That means it gives you opportunity, right? You are outside their radar to grow. So being undermined is your secret superpower because then you can grow without direct opposition, right? So don't be, because you're undermined is not an, a reason to give up. It's a reason to step up. Right, someone is undermining you is a reason to step up because it becomes your secret superpower. It means they are not seeing you as competition. They are not seeing you as opposition. They are focused somewhere else. That gives you time to grow. And we saw that in the life of, uh, what's the name again? Lima Ken. Uh, Lima, uh, we, we did a, a study of a book. as a second book, Believe It. You know, And she grew. She grew a company because people undermined her. People thought that she couldn't go that far, right? Whereas she was then able to break 
in, into new grounds, you know, uh, because of that. So and that's what Katy Ireland is telling us here. There is power in being on the mind. You can use it to your advantage, right? People looking down on you, it tells you you can use it. You can grow with it, you know? All right. We're looking at when poverty might be the answer, right? You know, when changes will be the answer. Uh, in a real sense, you know, poverty is always, there's going to be some kind of poverty we need to make, right? Because the environment we live in, we're working, is changing. But it's about using the right poverty for the right change. You don't want to take uh, giant steps when baby steps are required. You don't want to take baby steps when giant steps are required. Now, being able to match the right change, the, the, the right um, adjustment change to the right um, environment is critical. It's a science, it's an art, right? And that's what differentiates the great from the ordinary. That's what differentiates boys, boys, uh, men for boys by right? being able to know um, how to um, stay ahead of the ball game right efficiently and profitably right you don't want to spend so much money for when only so much uh, so little is required